This is Akash Vani. In the program Money Talk, we now bring you a discussion on GST provision for online gaming. The participants are Udayan Ray, economic analyst, and Lalima Aneja Dang, anchor. Online gaming is one of the major sunrise sectors of India. It emerged in India in mid 2000s. with the personal computer and console gaming platforms but covid lockdown saw a surge in the gaming industry well it is expected that the number of gamers will grow from 42 crore in 2022 to 50 crore by 2025 in india finance minister ms nirmala sitaraman today said that 28% gst on casinos and online gaming will be levied on the face value well for more on this we have with us our policy analyst udayan ray Udayan, welcome to Akashwani Studios. Thank you so much, Aluma. All right, Udayan. When we talk about 28% GST being levied on casinos and online gaming, there has been some confusion on this whether the money is involved or betting is involved or not involved, and the, the industry has gone to the, the finance minister for greater clarification. What would you have to say on this? Well, Aluma, I think what you're going to see is lots of clarifications coming in. And for instance, it's about where people money for profit. You know, you're actually if you are allowed to use the word betting so you are basically for profit your money is involved and for profit it is i think it's emerging now that it, it is this activity in the online gaming activity which is going to when you're placing the bet or whatever that's when this uh, 28% gst getting imposed etc is happening so this is where it is happening but in other areas where it's not happening for profit which is the popular gaming consoles and other things which are immensely popular that's where it's not happening and uh, so those areas are going to escape wherever your money is getting involved that's happening and that distinction has is slowly emerging the fact that it's been made and it's going to get cleared and of course as we know that a 6 month watch period has been stipulated mm-hmm. to see the impact on this particular segment of the industry so as you very rightly mentioned lalima that the number of gamers have been increasing and we know i mean look at any social media gamers are the most active communities in gaming out there there's so much of content so much of activity that happens the international contest the hardware is uh, different people the designing and the kind of uh, the intellectual property and the skills the information management skills the coding etc everything that's involved in gaming is of such a high order that if you want a sort of a development in the digital space uh, you cannot nobody can think of it without developing a good gaming sort of ecosystem it's while the word gaming sounds frivolous yeah. it might sound frivolous to some people there's a lot of serious technology creativity uh, and cutting edge technology so you know you as you all know what does gaming you need a different kind of laptop you need a different kind of gear for it and so there's a whole ecosystem that moves around it so that's the reason why possibly this discussion is happening because gaming carries with it a very whole a large ecosystem and when you talk about something like a 28% gst then as the first level of re, you know first level of reaction would be that you know you will probably raise your eyebrows yeah. you know you want that sector to develop so hardware software designing consumption it being a group activity and you know you'll find all digital hardware sort of stores etc there is so much of gaming hardware on that sold so that's a huge uh, ecosystem huge and these are all higher end products so but the good part is it's only about where monies are involved so there's a little bit of betting and etc that's happening that's where the gst is getting levied yeah as you rightly said that uh, monetary gains will be the distinguishing factor and esports i mean currently esports and games meant for entertainment alone attract only 18% gst and odian um, the finance minister ms sitaraman uh, has said that 28% gst on online gaming and casinos is expected to be implemented from the 1st of october she said that the council has agreed to come back after 6 months of implementation to review the way in which this is getting implemented how important is this 6 months of implementation there is also a problem of addiction i mean we can talk about that later but this implementation uh, can it have other um, implications yeah um, they want to see whether you know nobody wants to completely do away with a segment of a of an industry and you know lalima if you're gaming it's not it's like food you know if you're game, do playing game you're doing an xbox or whatever 
uh, playing with a console you might you might also do some gaming which has got money involved so it's not as if somebody who does uh, do does a particular area of gaming will not move over and also uh, participate in something like that but yes when you're looking at from a taxation point of view lalima it's important to remember that overall the tax treatment they're trying to remove anomalies mm-hmm. so you don't want to treat one one particular aspect uh, in one place uh, one particular aspect in a in a particular situation in a different way and the same aspect in a different uh, situation in a different way so let me give you an example mm-hmm. if you go to a television game show and you win uh, money uh, out there you get taxed at a much higher rate okay mm-hmm. so even if it's a skill or whatever whatever it's not your normal tax you know those those quiz and all those things that happen so you tax uh, there's a t- whether it's direct or indirect um it doesn't matter mm-hmm. i mean the larger philosophy is anything which is speculative anything where you're not investing in the real world i mean real assets or financial assets or whatever there you probably will pay a higher tax if you look at cryptos it's been taxed in a particular way right. of course here we are talking about gst it's not the same as that the overall philosophy is anything which is speculative in nature which is not linked to you know things that you can touch and feel and it's speculative in nature that's getting taxed so that's the larger trend where it's going so in terms of me how i see it i would say that i see that it, it being part of that philosophy now one can debate whether it's desirable or undesirable but the point is if somebody is decided to do something like this you know a speculative game or whatever a betting game then you pretty much know where what you're signing up for now are uh, you know when you go go to a casino abroad or whatever wherever you go to casino is that really cheap it is not no. okay mm-hmm. so and uh, you end up whether you like it or not you end up spending a lot of money yes yeah so in that sense in terms of a financial experience it is it is for the consumer it is not making that kind of a difference to me okay but uh, maybe the, the person who loves doing something like this may say that oh this is prohibitive etc etc but governments are known to fashion people's behavior through policy mm-hmm. so this is one policy so what the government is trying to strike a balance it doesn't want to completely an industry that's part of the industry which is doing well or whatever and it's uh, uh, giving also a lot of employment to many yeah, people I mean, considering the indian brain which is so I mean, good for the it yeah so you don't want things to get messed up out there right. but from the other side they are they're probably looking at this that they don't want to treat this in a very different way i know a lot of people will not like these comments but you know you go to a game show and you win the chance you you, you get 10 good questions strike it it's not skill in yes. that sense yes there's a lot of chance out there you get taxed at a much higher rate okay and here also it, it's probably looking at it like that that okay it's a direct tax so what it's this activity is akin to that activity nobody in the government has said it so this is how i am looking at it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and that's how and th- there's a particular way in which the government our government successive governments have been looking at these kind of incomes mm-hmm. or these kind of activities and in that purview this thing is coming in we could have a whole discussion on regulation versus innovation in the context of what you just talked about with then gaming can be there's a negative fallout gaming can be addictive and the average indian in 2022 spent eight and a half hours per week and who has coined a, a word a disorder called gaming disorder having said this now uh, when you know when the government taxes huge taxes on liquor or cigarettes and then there are societal problems and then it wants to back out it can't because the revenue is coming from there i'm playing the devil's advocate can this be an issue later yeah i mean uh, gaming addiction is uh, nothing new i mean uh, you do get addicted to gaming and it's the whole experience and let's also not forget that gaming it's been evolving that experience gaming experience the cutting edge technologies typically where do they get implemented first gaming is one of them mm-hmm. oh. your feature films vfx etc they get other places but they are the some of the first port of calls where these things get developed so uh, some of the brightest minds in the it space get employment in gaming mm-hmm. so data analysts data crunchers data uh, coders it's a it's absolutely a different league so mm-hmm. yes you for a consumer there are there are issues 
but nobody can actually contest the fact that um, this it's it's uh, on on the provider side there's a lot of skill involved the other th- point uh, important point to remember uh, lalima is if you have a good gaming sector then you can have these non money based games why can't an indian company produce a good gaming console yes we can try and do that and they have pure and entertainment which is not taxed yeah yeah because and, and, and uh, there are uh, it's not as though every great game is coming out of uh, us mm-hmm. there, there are lots of other places where wonderful games are coming out uh, so uh, we can do that and that's Uh, compared to these uh, capacity centers in india and uh, all these offshoring of people that we we send people abroad mm-hmm. you will get much more uh, because these are products mm-hmm. so you get a m- far higher revenues than for uh, some of these things and you don't uh, you know those these are very sticky revenues so what i'm saying is on one side is a great area which requires development mm-hmm. and the other side is the addictiveness that you're talking about so it's a balance that you want to keep you don't want to do anything with the goose that lays the golden egg at the same time you don't want things to get messed up right india ranks among top 10 gaming countries of the world eight to be precise and we produce three major unicorns in the online uh, gaming industry and that probably uh, answers the question that we may uh, be able to push Uh, for more employment through this and indian mind is kind of considering the fact that many scientists are there in nasa who are indians and our mind is probably more suitable for the uh, it industry if i may put it in a layman's language so eventually uh, udan uh, we can say that with the increase in smartphones and better internet connectivity and rising disposable income of indians Uh, we have a huge population which is uh, a huge youth population uh, we have a great scope for uh, the gaming industry and uh, as you said some of the top players of the video industry have sought clear demarcation and uh, to dispel any misconception which way are we going now finally i think it will get sorted out i mean eventually it will get sorted out but yeah i'm quite sure that wherever there will be games for made for uh, betting etc rummy kind of a thing mm-hmm. uh, money is involved i think it will be taxed at a gst will be at a higher rate uh, all these amendments that are being talked of i think it's pretty much fate a complete i mean one can quib- quibble about what it's going to be it's going to be more than the what's par for the course one can be fairly certain all right uh, thank you then for talking to us let's hope that as i said we could talk for hours together on regulation and innovation going together especially as far as the gaming industry goes because as we know that the fallout negative fallout can be addiction and there is an addiction disorder which the WHO is talking about let's hope that we find a nice neat balance while taxing the games where money and betting is involved and yet making gaming a part of the entertainment industry thank you very much udayan for talking to us thank you so much laluma you were listening to a discussion on gst provision for online gaming the participants were udayan ray economic analyst and lalima aneja dang anchor this program was produced and presented by the news services division of akash vani you can listen to it on our mobile app news on air this program is also available on our youtube channel news on air official you may share your feedback about this program through email at airnsdtalks@gmail.com or whatsapp on 9289094044